Today, Henry VIII is remembered in history for being a brutal and ruthless king of England, but he is also remembered for having six wives. Two of these wives lost their head inside of the Tower of London, and Henry would also cross many of his closest friends, and he would send them to the executioner's scaffold all across London. However, the king was not always that way. He was at times known to have been kind and generous, and he would also try to impress. He was a man obsessed with court life and respect, and Henry VIII was considered one of the most handsome princes in Europe in his years before he became the king. But on the 24th of January 1536, an accident would happen that changed Henry VIII, and he would, following this, turn into being the brutal monarch who has gone down in history for being a killer of his wives, friends and people. But what happened with the king's infamous jousting accident? In January of 1536, Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon, had died, and she had been practically held under house arrest throughout her final years, and she would be prevented from seeing her own daughter, the future Mary I, or Bloody Mary, as she is better known. Catherine fell from grace at the expense of Anne Boleyn, the king's second wife, and Henry, when he found out about Catherine's death, was incredibly happy. He and Anne wore the colour yellow and held banquets and celebrations regarding Catherine's death, which was considered very distasteful. But for the king, her death brought an end to a decade of trouble regarding the validity of his marriage to Anne Boleyn, and at this time Anne was pregnant again, and it was hoped that this child would be the son, as Henry VIII greatly wished for his male heir. January 1536 was a month which was marked by the celebrations, and for the king he decided to hold a brilliant tournament, complete with dances, feasts and a joust on the tilt yard. But the king, who was considered a skilled jouster, decided to take part in the joust himself. He may have been convinced, otherwise he was at this time in his forties, and the king was not as lean as he used to be. He was at this time heavier, and it would not have been advisable for him to take part, as jousting was of course a very dangerous sport. Henry, though, could not be talked out of it, and he wanted to show off in front of women and others. He was a showman, and he wanted to look powerful and probably fancied his chances of being victorious. However, this joust occurred on the 24th of January 1536, and Henry VIII rode out onto the tilt yard dressed in his best armour, which had been polished. He had a huge cod piece on this armour, to show how virile the king was, and his horse was also dressed in its best armour. When he rode out onto the tilt yard, he was cheered by the crowd who had gathered to witness this, but Anne Boleyn, it's believed, was not present, as she was pregnant, and Henry VIII, when he came out, it's believed, tripped his lance towards another woman, possibly Jane Seymour, who would then become his third wife. It's not recorded who the king's opponent was in the joust at Greenwich Palace that day, he had once fought Charles Brandon on the tilt yard, and he had been injured against Brandon before. But whoever the king's opponent was, inflicted an injury onto the king, which could have changed history forever. When Henry and his opponent rode towards each other, the king's opponent, armed with his lance, smashed into the king's armour, with the lance shattering it, and this forced King Henry VIII off of his horse, and he landed terribly. The king's heavily armoured horse also toppled, and the horse fell on top of the king, and Henry VIII was knocked out and was unconscious for some time. His attendants tried their best to rouse him, but Henry was unresponsive, and he was carried into the palace, and his injuries were checked. Part of the lance had also pierced his leg, and Henry's injuries were all internal. The doctors could not treat this, and for many hours the king was unconscious and was out cold, and it was believed by the king's servants that the king had been killed. Some debated who they would support following the king's death, as this was a point in history where there was no male successor, so it would have been whether Princess Mary, or more probably Princess Elizabeth, would have had to have become queen, as she was the daughter of Anne Boleyn. But the king would then awake, but his life was then changed forever by his injury. It was said that, we posit that his jousting accident of 1536 provides the explanation for his personality change from sporty, promising, generous young prince to cruel, paranoid and vicious tyrant. 
From that date, the turnover of the wives really speeds up, and people begin to talk about him in a quiet, a new and negative way. And the accident, he was unconscious for two hours. Even five minutes of unconsciousness is considered to be a major trauma today. The king always had signs that he would become a brutal man, but following the accident, his temper became wild and he would experience severe mood swings. He also had a number of bad headaches and the king's leg would never heal properly, meaning his mobility was greatly affected. This would then be drained of pus every now and then and the king would, following this injury, then put on a lot of weight as he would not exercise that much. This made things worse, but the king was confronted by the fact he was not a young athletic man anymore and he was getting older and the king was not as virile as he once was either. Following the accident, Anne Boleyn, the king's wife and queen, was told that there was a good chance her husband was dying and that he would not make it. And it's believed because of the stress, Anne miscarried a child, that may have been a son, and the impact of this was then coupled with the king's ruthlessness that she would then lose her head inside of the Tower of London. An ambassador following the injury would write of the king that this prince seemed tainted, among other vices, with three which in a king may be called plagues. The first is that he is so covetous that all the riches in the world would not satisfy him, hence the ruin of the abbeys, spoil of the churches that had everything to take. Everything is good prize, and he does not reflect that to make himself rich he has impoverished his people. Thence proceeds the second plague, distrust and fear. This king, knowing how many changes he has made and what tragedies and scandals he has created, would fain keep in favour with everybody, but does not trust a single man, expecting to see them all offended and he will not cease to dip his hand in blood as long as he doubts his people. The third plague, lightness and inconsistency, has prevented the rights of religion, marriage, faith and promise. The king's incident on the jousting accident could have led to the king suffering from a form of brain injury and historians have stated that in recent decades that the injury caused the king's sharp change in personality. Today these behavioural changes could be linked to the accident. But they were not at the time and what we know about the jousting accident is that the king was knocked out for hours. This is pivotal as it shows you how serious and severe this was and it could have killed the king easily, but this effects went deeper, and the king would turn into a dark and depressive man who would in the years following execute two of his wives, and he would turbulently rush into marriages and would turn on some of his closest friends. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.